Hi, welcome to the podcast. My name is Lindsay, and I'm here at Insight Memory Care Center in Fairfax, Virginia. Insight is a nonprofit, dementia specific adult day health and resource center. Please enjoy this podcast. Welcome to the RSVP Northern Virginia Weekly Podcast. This is Rob Payne, your host, Marketing and Outreach Specialist with RSVP Northern Virginia. RSVP Northern Virginia is a volunteer program specifically designed for those 55 years young and greater in the Northern Virginia area. Each week, we feature one of our fantastic volunteers or nonprofit partners. So sit back and enjoy, and thanks for tuning in. Hi, this is Rob Payne with RSVP Northern Virginia, and welcome to our newest podcast. Today we have the pleasure of being at the Insight Memory Care Center in Fairfax, Virginia, and today we have the pleasure of speaking with Lindsay Vajpai, who is the Director of Education and Outreach for Insight Memory Care Center, and we also have the pleasure of speaking with Jesse Wilson, who is an Early Stage Coordinator with Insight. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's start at the top here, and um, Lindsay, if you could tell us sort of some history and some background on how the Insight Center got to be where it is today. and Sure. Insight began in 1984. It was founded by a hospice and palliative care nurse who led a support group and realized the real lack of resources in the community for those living with dementia. Um, and we actually weren't called Insight then. We were the family day center. Um, And over the years, we've grown, we've moved locations, um, changed names to better reflect who we are now. Um, And so we've been here at our location in Fair Oaks since 2015 um, at Insight Memory Care Center. And how many people or how many clients approximately do you serve in a given week? Well, in our adult day center, we serve up to 60 participants each day. Um, But on a week average, that could be 75 or 80 different people because not everyone comes every day. And in our early stage reconnections program, we take up to 12 or 14 people per day, up to three times per week. That's great. And I'm, I'm sort of a stats nut. So uh, recently, the county sent out some stats on, on the population and age distribution and things like that. And I think it's by 2020, there's going to be something like 28% of the people in Fair, Fairfax County alone are going to be over the age of 55. Mm-hmm. And that must obviously mean an increase in, the, in folks who need your services. Right, absolutely. Um, they're actually projecting from the year 2010 to the year 2030 that the, uh, it'll increase by 76% the number of older adults in Northern Virginia who have Alzheimer's disease. Gee, that, that's, that's, that's something. So what, tell, tell us a little bit about, because we, we'd like to sort of educate some of our folks on exactly what people come to expect here for service, mm-hmm. uh, for, for care. How, if, if someone has a relative who has a memory issue or Alzheimer's and they drop them off here for a day, exactly, just in, or in general, what, what happens? Well, Insight has a number of different programs. Um, As far as the care, we're mostly known for our adult day center. And one thing that's really unique about our adult day center is that it's dementia specific. So it's the only dementia specific adult day center in the whole DC metro area. Um, And so we have the day center, which serves a number of people who who come to Insight. But then we also have an early stage reconnections program. Uh, We have a mind and body workshop for couples in the early stage. We have something called a share program. Um, We have support groups for caregivers. We do consultations. Uh, We also do memory screenings for those who are concerned about their memory. So Insight is really more than just the day center program. There's a lot of other programs both for the diagnosed individual and also for those family caregivers. Now, if if, uh, someone who's listening to this podcast, again, has a loved one that they think might have a memory issue and they do want to become more educated, what would be the best way to take part in some of these these educational programs? Mm -hmm. I would say a good first step is to join our classes for caregivers. We hold a class every third Wednesday of the month from 1 until 3 in the afternoon. And then we also have special other series throughout the year, wellness workshops, caregiver boot camps, engagement workshops, and other special events. So that's a really good way to start getting connected to Insight, to get educated about the disease and resources that might help you as a caregiver. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, volunteers because uh, that's what we do, and, and uh, we're, a, we're a nonprofit partner, work partner of uh, Insight. Tell us a little bit about the volunteer needs that you currently have, or, or even bigger than that, what, what do volunteers do when they come to Insight? Sure. So for the early stage program, Reconnections, which I facilitate, plan um, pretty much everything, 
uh, you know, volunteers are a huge part of what we need here. Um, they offer a huge, you know, support for the staff, um, especially since we are growing so big. We have quite a long wait list for our early stage program, um, and they offer just kind of a new perspective. Been just doing one-on-one -on -one discussions, small, small groups. Um, you know, sharing a passion with them is really important. They love to interact and discuss with different people and, you know, meet new faces. So, you know, things of that nature are what I'm looking for for our reconnections program. Now, when someone comes in and, and volunteers, or if Carly, uh, Carly's also with us, our volunteer specialist from RSVP, if Carly sends someone to you all who's interested in, in volunteering here, is there a, a orientation process? Is there a, any type of background checks? How does, that, how does that work? Sure, absolutely. So the person would contact Insight, and then we would send them in some information about volunteering. So that would include um, a volunteer application that they would fill out, and also some of the requirements that we have for volunteers, which would include being at least 16 years old, um, authorizing a background check, which is something that we do. The volunteer does not have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. um, also pursuing a, a TB test, showing that you have a negative TB test, which is something the volunteer would do on their own and bring those results to Insight um, and have a valid form of photo identification as well. And so once that person submits their application, then we would let them know about the next volunteer orientation. Mm -hmm. So typically the volunteer orientations happen about once a month. They're usually at 3.30 in the afternoon, but not necessarily on a set day of the week. Mm -hmm. And the orientation lasts about an hour and a half. And that would include a tour of the center as well. Okay. And then once once that, that compl that's completed, then the folks are ready to go. And I know one of the other questions that Carly in particular gets a lot of questions about uh, it, it would be, is there a minimum time I have to volunteer? Is there a set time I have to volunteer every week? Can I just call you guys anytime I want and spend spend time with your uh, with your clients at the center? How? To tell me a little bit about that. It depends a little bit what the volunteer role is. Mm -hmm. Typically, volunteers are sort of regular okay. people who come to the center. Uh -huh. um, so if, there, if it's someone coming to help with reconnections that Jesse was just talking about, maybe they come in for an hour every week, let's say on Friday afternoon. So that would be their set schedule. For volunteers who come into our day center, uh, it all, we also prefer that they have some sort of a set schedule and maybe they come in for two or three hours on a certain day of the week. Uh, so overall, we're usually looking for volunteers who can commit at least 40 hours in a four month period. But then again, if you're someone who's just coming in to leave like a half hour exercise once right. a week, we understand that that would not reach 40 okay. hours in a four month period. So there is a little bit of, of leeway and variety there, but at the same time, it is a little bit different from some other volunteers. And mm -hmm. because I guess the other thing would be that when you're working with clients, uh, they like to see similar exactly. faces because they get to trust people and know people and stuff like that. Absolutely. And you're, when you, so, and when you're a volunteer here, you're working with all stages of all dementia, or is it, or do you segregate it at all? Well, when the volunteer fills out their application, there are sort of check boxes that they can identify what they're most interested in. Mm -hmm. And as they're working with our staff and deciding what is the best volunteer role for them and the best schedule for them, um, they would probably be working with a certain population in a certain kind of role. Now, over time, that could change depending on the volunteer's you know, interests, availability, and, and comfort with being here at Insight. But typically, you're going to have sort of a, a more narrow um, volunteer role in the beginning. And I would assume, or, or let me ask you this too, uh, a lot of folks would, would want, they don't have to have any medical background or training necessarily in, in right. working with dementia or Alzheimer's Absolutely. patients. No, no, no need to have a clinical background of any kind. Right. And we do offer some kind of basic dementia training, communication skills, and things mm -hmm. like that during our volunteer orientation. That's good. And, and so just to reemphasize what you were saying earlier, a lot of what volunteers do here, um, which is a consistency with a lot of, of what our other volunteers do at different places, is is they provide company and 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 companionship to the to the to the uh, clients, the patients. Mm -hmm. Would that be accurate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, let's see. So let's let's talk about uh, why seniors. Uh, we we obviously specialize in senior volunteers, fifty five and over. Uh, do you do you guys have a what percentage would you say off the bat uh, is 
off the top of your head is are, are people in, in that age group, do they tend to be? I mean, I would imagine just because of scheduling, they might be reti- more retired, than, but I don't know. For the early stage program, okay. um, and I have three main volunteers that I have on a consistent uh-huh. weekly basis, uh-huh. I would say all three are 65 and older, okay. which is great because they have that background. They grew up in a similar time period that the um, participants we work with, right. uh, so they you know, have similar music tastes. You know, they can talk about the fashion of that time, um, celebrities. They know things since they kind of grew up in that same time period, and they can relate, which is huge. You know, as you know, a young adult, there's some things that I just cannot relate to, right. and it's really nice to have that perspective um, with the volunteers. You know, they can have that conversation sure. that I'm unable to. Sure. Things where we wanted to touch on here, uh, a lot of y'all out there might be thinking, boy, I, I, I've, I know I have a loved one or a grandfather or a father or a brother that could really benefit from uh, the Insights program, but I'm not quite sure how to get them into the door. Uh, could you all give some advice on not only how to do that, but what are the benefits for people who are grappling and being the sole caretaker of someone with dementia or Alzheimer's? What are the benefits of having him in this program, their loved ones? We know what a toll caregiving can take on those family caregivers. And, and really, they need education and they need support, and eventually they will need care for their loved ones. Um, And so by getting involved with Insight, coming to a support group, coming to an education class as a caregiver, it gets you connected to other people who are walking the same path, who've kind of been through some of the same experiences that you are as a family caregiver, and can give you some tips on what worked for them. Um, Depending on the program here at Insight, there are different ways that we, you know, help entice that person Mm -hmm. living with dementia to come here. If it's an early stage program, that person often has the capacity to kind of be involved in discussions and why this would be a fun place to come, a beneficial place. For the day center, um, the families would work with our staff in the day center to figure out a good approach to help bring their loved one in, but oftentimes in the beginning, people think that they're coming here to volunteer. Uh, they think that they're coming you know, to, to do a project, to help other people, um, or maybe just to stay for a little while while their loved one goes to an appointment, and we just kind of gradually help introduce people to Insight. If a family caregiver is coming to one of Insight's support groups or education classes, we actually offer a free respite in our day center while that person, while the family caregiver is in the support group or the class. So that's also a nice way to just kind of try something out for a couple hours and help slowly introduce that person to Insight. That sounds fantastic, and I'm sure that, that that's really helpful advice and information. And the second thing we were going to talk about uh, was just upcoming events, outreach events, events here. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So Insight has a number of things coming up. Uh, one of them is our next series, the Mind and Body Workshop. So this is a program for a person with early stage dementia and their care partner, so a spouse or adult child, a friend to come and do something together. It's a five-week series, um, and it's it's themed, and it's a really great way for that couple to be active together and also connect with peers and get some support. So our next series will launch on March 5th. Uh, we have a Dementia 101 class that's being taught um, by one of the nurse practitioners from Georgetown Memory Disorders Clinic, and that is on March 21st from 1 until 3 in the afternoon. And our next caregiver boot camp, which is kind of like a full Saturday you know, lay it all out, let caregivers know what they need to know, will be on Saturday, March 7th. Sorry, not March 7th, April 7th. Um, And so you can find all of these dates and register for these upcoming programs on our website, insightmcc.org. Excellent. And Jesse, we, we want to talk to you too about, uh, if uh, again, more specifically about volunteering. Now, you're currently handling the volunteer intake for the early stage program. Is that correct? Correct. Reconnections is what Re- we call it. Reconnections, I'm sorry. Uh, so if so, just talk a little bit about that and if, if, or about if someone in is, is specifically interested in that program, what should they do? Sure. So our program, uh, Reconnections, is on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 10 to 3. Um, and so if you are interested in volunteering, you know, like we talked about earlier, it can be from one hour to, you know, three hours, um, really depending on your availability. I'm very flexible with scheduling and figuring out a time that works for you, uh, since I do handle all the scheduling of programs. Um, so, you know, the best way to contact me is through email, since I am usually facilitating the program um, during the week. But, you know, it's 
it's really finding something that you're passionate about. Not only that, you know, we really appreciate volunteers. We really couldn't do it without all the support that they give and time and effort. You know, this program wouldn't have the quality it has right now without the wonderful volunteers. And we're always looking for new faces, new perspectives, and, you know, people that want to give back to the community. Thank you. And thank you to RSVP for yeah, always helping us getting connect connection with these great volunteers. And thanks to everyone who's listening and learning more about Insight. We hope that you'll call on us if there's ever a need. Thank you. Well, excellent. Well, it's been our pleasure to be here. Thank you again. Uh, we look forward to working with you guys even closer going forward. And hopefully we can get some great volunteers. Uh, and who knows, we might even have an orientation out here at some point if, if, if that's something you guys are interested in. So um, thank you again. Thank you for tuning into the podcast today. We hope you have a great afternoon or great, great evening, afternoon, whenever you might be listening to this. And again, one last time on the website, if you want to find out more about RSV, RSVP, it's uh, RSVP svpnova.org and uh, if you want to find out more about Insight, it's Insight I-N-S-I-G-H-T M as in Mary C-C dot org and you can, the, the, the Insight website really has a lot of great, not only information about volunteering but it's just a great resource for folks who might want to learn more about uh, memory related issues thank you again, I appreciate it, have a great day thanks Thank you for joining us today on the RSVP Northern Virginia podcast. For Carly Hudicki, this is Rob Payne saying thanks and have a great day. Remember, RSVP Northern Virginia, matching great senior volunteers with great opportunities. For more information, please visit our website at www.rsvpnova.org. Have a great day.